Uh, the title that I'd like to talk to us for a few minutes about is just simply this. An empty throne doesn't mean an absent king. An empty throne doesn't mean an absent king. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. God, like he so frequently does, catches us by surprise and comes in an unexpected way. Just maybe like he did for somebody this morning. Scripture says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout. Oh, daughter of Jerusalem, I'll stop right there for a moment. Now, I know we're in the comfort of our own homes for the last little while. But I'd like to remind someone that we're in an apostolic Pentecostal service. And you have the opportunity to make your living room your church house right now. So I, I just wish for one moment, I know, you're t I know we have the ability to talk. And we haven't been able to get closer than six feet to some people. So I know you've got the ability to lift your voice this morning. So I wonder if just we'd stop right there and we'll say, why don't we just rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. And why don't we shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, just for a moment. Come on, Zion, why don't you lift your voice just for a moment. I, I have come to declare God's greatness. I've come to shout. Why? Because the King is coming unto us today. I feel His presence just moving in the room right now. There, there's something. You're bringing His power. Your praise becomes His habitation. What's happening in the room right now is preparing what God is about to do in us and through us this morning. What God wants to do in this room and beyond this room, it's about to happen. So why don't we just prepare the launch pad for the Holy Ghost by the power of our praise together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. I, I just take it from that that Zachariah was saying there were some people who were a little too quiet. There were some people who were just a little bit too silent in a moment when they shouldn't have been. So he said, rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, and shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon the colt, the foal of an ass. The God of glory riding on a beast of burden is an unlikely sight, no doubt. But Zechariah was saying, get ready to rejoice because sometimes God's going to show up in the way that you don't expect him to show up. Tucked away in the chronicles of the kings, we find a story of sabotage and intrigue. It's all there in your Bible if you read. You may well... Uh, Mark it down. As long as there is an earthly throne, there's going to be a struggle for who controls the kingdom. It's in the 22nd chapter of 2 Chronicles that we find this interesting story of how God works something in us during seasons of silence. When the earthly king strayed from the heavenly king's purpose, nothing good can come of it. And we find that happening in the book of Chronicles over and over and over again. The earthly king, why? His position was meant to mirror the heavenly one. And so if and or when a king's humanity rose up against God's deity, God was always sure to let that king and the people know that God was still in control. Anyone ever had God do that for you? Anyone ever just try to rise up in your own kingdom for a little while and, and God just kind of says, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. We're just going to set you back down right there. We've all had that happen a few times, haven't we? When we, we just kind of make our own plan, we fulfill our own purposes, and we're walking along into our own destiny, and divine word from God comes, or a plan of God interrupts our plan, and all of a sudden our intentions are... And God says, I just took a minute, I just had to take a minute and put you back down in your rightful place. You see, we, we too often try and crawl up on God's throne. Too often, we, if we're given the opportunity, we're, we're just kind of scrambling like a little kid wants to get behind the steering wheel of the car, right? Little, 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 little kids, they, they like that power. They like that ability. And sometimes we're just too much like that. We want to climb up on God's throne. We want to get in, in control of the kingdom of our own lives sometimes too frequently. And, and, and so it's not, it's not unusual for God to say, oh, no, no, no. No, that's not for you. That's not for you to play with. Uh, 
you know, I, I get a kick at a pastor. I noticed that as the grandchildren became coming around the office more often that all the knickknacks left. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not drawing any conclusions there. But before all, if you go in there now, it, it went from like the New Brunswick Museum to the Regent Mall right now, empty, <laughs> barren. You walk, you walk in and there's a, I don't even know what's in there now. As a matter of fact, we put a couple cupboards up to make, some, make, make, make something look like it's going on in there. But all the, all the pictures came off the wall. Everything went off the, off the floor. I mean, we used to have to, <clears throat> you couldn't vacuum in there. You had to kind of get a leaf blower and blow around. <laughs> we, it just, I'm not, I'm not drawing any conclusions, but I think maybe I might be onto something there. I mean, maybe on be, because before everything left, before, before everything vanished, before the room became an empty wasteland, barren with nothing but chairs and empty tabletop, I, I actually felt so bad. I had, you know, I'm not like pastor. I'm not a knick-knack collector. I, I got, you know, I had a couple things from Pakistan. I, I had one bowl that, I, you know, I have a, one bowl in my office. I took that out and sat in the middle of the table in there. There's one little lone marble bowl sitting in the room all by itself, all by, all by its lone self. But I, I do remember before everything left that I used to hear, oh, no, no, no. It was a full-time job. Oh, no, we can't, oh, we can't touch that. We, oh, no, we can't, we can't break that. Oh, no, no. Oh. But so often our, our lives are like that because why? We, we're, we're, we're not mature enough to handle the kingdom, and, and, but yet we're trying to crawl up on the throne. We're, we're trying to get, a, get in control of, of our kingdom of our lives, and God so often has to say, hold on a minute. We just got to gotta set you back down for a minute because sometimes we, we see a vacancy in what's happening in our life. We see a, a vacancy in the area of the throne, and we're thinking, well, I better get up and control my own destiny. I better get up and control my own life. I, I've got to get up and, and, and take control of what's happening. God said, no, no, just because I'm not on, on that throne right now doesn't mean I'm not in control right now. Just because the, the throne is empty doesn't mean that I'm absent. I'm just working in another area, right? I don't know God's omniscient. Don't, don't come at me with the comments. Just let me preach for a minute. Because somebody, you need to know that you're trying to control what's God's. You're not the king. He is. He's in control today, and we find that this power struggle is happening in the 22nd chapter of 2 Chronicles. Earthly kingdoms were rising up against God's purpose and God's plan and God's intention, and, and no wonder Jesus said, here's how you need to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Because your kingdom is always going to rise up if you don't intentionally pray for his kingdom to come. It's Ahasia in the, in the scripture that tells us he became the king of Judah at the age of 42. And I'm just stepping into the middle of the Chronicles of the Kings. So you, if you want more background, you can read back. But let's, let me jump in right here. It's Ahasia. And he, he becomes a king of Judah at the age of 42. And the Bible says that he reigned for a year. And, and in that year, the, the Bible tells us that his mother was his wicked counselor. He, he did evil in the sight of the Lord. And he went after the way of Ahab. And he, he follows after that. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 22.7, the destruction of Ahasia was of God. By coming to Joram, for when he came, he went out with Jehoram against Jehu, the son of Nimshi, whom the Lord had anointed to cut off the house of Ahab. So we've got this picture that this king, this earthly king, allies himself with uh, a worldly intention and a worldly purpose in the wrong house. And he goes against the individual that God has anointed. And the end of that can never be good. And, and so the Bible tells us that Ahasia, his life is taken. So with the death of the king of Judah, the king, of, the king James Version says this, the, the house of Ahasia had no power to keep still the kingdom. In other words, there's no one left that is capable to rule in the kingdom. And in this vacuum of power, Ahasia's wicked mother, who has been his mentor and who has been his director up until now, she sees the vacuum of power and this wicked woman steps in and takes over the throne and kills all of her own grandsons. So they won't be able to claim the throne. 
and would appear in this season like it's just this absolute chaos and calamity and, and Judah's in a mess and they don't know where to turn. And in, in the midst of all of this chaos, there happens to be one woman. Can I just tell you that one person in God's hand is never a coincidence. In the midst of everything that's happening in our world right now, God is looking for one person to accomplish his purpose today. There was one woman, and I know I throw a, a lot of names at you, and I'm just, just barely telling the story because we don't have time to go through it all right now, but, but in the midst of this chaos of an empty throne and a grandmother who takes out her own grandson so that they can't usurp the authority, and she steps in to fill the, the void of power that's there, and, and she's already lost her son, but she's so power hungry that she's just wanting to take over the kingdom and take over the throne that in the midst of this, when she thinks that she's killed all the potential suitors for the throne that there's one woman she's a the wife of the priest Jehoiada and she manages it just happens or God ordains that she finds the infant prince Joash and while everybody assumes that the kingdom has been destroyed she manages to get this infant boy and she takes him and the scripture tells us that she hides him away and for six years, the kingdom seems to be going forward under this wicked woman, Italia. It seems like it is being overthrown and her purpose is being fulfilled. And it looks like God's not in control right now. It looks like wrong is accomplishing all of its purpose and right is far from anything that should happen. But it's in this environment that something's happening behind the scenes and in the silence Jehoiada, the priest, and his wife work to raise Joash. They raise him in silence and secrecy. They, they raise him in great security because no one can find out that they've got the prince under the roof of the temple. No one can find out that he's there because his life would certainly be in peril and theirs as well. But somewhere in the back of the palace, somewhere in the temple, you find that this little priest, pr prince is being trained by the priest about what he needs to learn and what he needs to do. I, I, I don't want us to, to miss the moment right now, so let's just step in for a second. You, you never know what you train in this moment is going to come back to pay us back in the future. Our children need to be trained. And, and he was only in their control for six years. And he's not even their son, but there they are. Joash, you need to listen to me. You need to listen to the scripture here. Oh, Israel, the Lord, our God, is one. Why? Because they know on the outside, Ahab and Jezebel's influence is going to try and destroy the purpose and the plan of God. But if this priest is going to have anything to say about it, if this man of God is going to have any input, then he's going to take the time and he's going to train the Come on, the, the prince, so he'll know about the kingdom of God. Is, is anybody grateful for your heritage today? Anybody grateful that somebody stopped for a few minutes to tell you about the goodness and the greatness of God? That somebody just kind of stopped up and said, let me tell you something. I, I want to remind you that there's only one God and we've got to fear him. I, I want to talk to you about just some commandments that you need in your life because the world's going to challenge it, but you need to know deep in your heart there's only one God and it's only him that we've come to serve. I, I I know we may have been taught it a long time ago, but would someone just let a little echo happen in the pew or in your home right now? I'm grateful that we know the God that we serve today. Oh, Joash, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And, and I know, I know I'm, I'm baiting us a little bit this morning, but that's all right. I need your help. So for six years, the throne room is empty of a legitimate king. For six years, Italia holds court and commands decisions. For six years, she imposes her rank and requisitions her desires. For six years, she feels like she is the queen of the castle. Her regal reign would appear to be powerful, but she's not right and she's not anywhere near royal. She's nothing more than a cheap fake and a fraud because somewhere on the sidelines and in the shadow of the temple, the king is shadowing the man of God. The true kingdom is growing stronger, and it's growing more powerful. The announcements may come from this fake queen, but the authority is resting elsewhere. 
No one is sitting on the throne in this moment because the king is still learning to sit up. No one's sitting on the throne in that moment because he doesn't have the ability to lead. But can I tell you that your ability is not an indicator of your authority today. Someone, you need to know right now that maybe you're a little lacking in the ability department, but you're not lacking in the authority department because God has placed his name over your life. I just want someone to remind themselves about who they are. I am a child of the king. I am royalty. I've been bought with his blood. I've been grafted in the vine. I'm a king's kid today. I'm a king's kid today. Sometimes we just need to, uh, the little meme going around right now, I told someone this week, I said, I think it's, it's so cute. It says something like, you know, when, when life bangs you around a little bit, you got to just kind of take stock of what's happening, adjust your crown, and realize who you are. We're king's kids. Come on, if your neighbor's in your bubble, tap them. Say, you're, you're a king's kid. We're king's kids today. That's who we are. When the enemy comes in like a flood, you need to remind yourself, ah, uh-uh, I'm a king's kid. The only one that can take you down off the throne is the king of kings and the lord of lords when we try and crawl. But, but I tell you what, you're a prince. You're a princess in God. Remind yourself about who you are today. You are a king's kid. Your ability is not the indicator of your authority. Because if it was about ability, a six-year-old child doesn't have a whole lot of ability to lead the kingdom. But yet, they're grooming him and they're preparing him to come out because come out in his place of authority. Come out in his place of power. Why? Because he has that authority. He's a king's son. He is the prince in waiting. He is the king to be. So while there is taking this season to groom him and spiritually prepare him, don't, don't mistake what's happening all around in the kingdom because the king is still in control today. The king is still in control of what's happening around us. Newsflash. I, I've talked about this almost every time I get up. Why? Because we all forget. We leave, we still, we're still talking about the same thing we talked about six weeks ago. It just cycles around in our conversation. We had the new daily news briefing. It's like, seriously, come on. And if you're not careful, all of a sudden the wrong people are on the throne of your life and they're determining the decision and they're determining your attitude and your, your feelings. They're determining how your day is going to go by what they've got to say. Can I just remind someone right now they're not on the throne of your life. They're not royal. They're not regal. They're not in control of anything that's happening. God's well in control. He's still able to manage. And if you're, it's happening in the sidelines. It's happening in the shadow. God's just kind of bringing us back together to remind us, get ready because I'm about to do something. Declaration is in the room. The the power of the prophetic is ready to work if we're ready to receive it. So I wish we'd just get our spirits right and get our spirits ready because the way that it looks on the outside isn't even reality. It's not the way that it's happening on the inside. The king is still in control. The king is in control today. The true kingdom is growing stronger and it's growing more powerful every single day. And you need to remind the enemy because the enemy, in a moment like this, he's been around 4,000 years. He ain't stupid. So when he comes in, in a moment like this, he's going to come in like a flood. But the Bible gave us commandment. When he comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And I feel it rising up in the room right now. I feel it rising up in my spirit right now. Why? Because he's come in like a flood. But it's in that moment. Don't get looking at the flood. Get looking for the rise of the Holy Ghost that's happening in your life. Get ready for the rise of authority. Get ready for the rise of power. Because he's not on the throne. The king is ready to come if you'll let him. The king shall come in and lift up a standard against him is what the Bible says. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. We, we're under his name and there is no salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I, I like 1 Chronicles 29 and 11. I've, I wrote it down a long time ago and I read it all the time. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. Do we get it? Yes. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power, and the glory, and the majesty for all that is in the heavens. Someone say all. all. 
and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. This is his kingdom today. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest, someone just say it, thou reignest over all. Not over some, not over a few states that have been opened. God's reigning over what's happening right now, right here. God reigns over all. And in thine hand is power and might. And in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all. God is the giver of any authority. God is the giver of any power. God, he, he's just managing everything from the sidelines. Don't mistake what's happening on the surface for what's happening in the sidelines. God is still in control. If you, come on, if you read that story, it's in a, it's in a back bedroom of, of the temple where God is just grooming the king to be under the hand of the man of God why because the kingdom isn't in peril because the king of kings is still in control God is still in control today so the king may not appear like he's on the throne but the kingdom is in good hands confusion confusion can come easy when you're in the quiet and you don't know where the king is but now is not the time for the church to hibernate. Now is the time for us to push back against that now I lay me down to sleep spirit mentality. Why? Because the king is coming and he's coming soon. Inspiration. <clears throat> Inspiration comes from some pretty odd places sometimes. We can come back to the music. Hulk Hogan, anybody remember who he is? Wrestler, Hulk Hogan. I kind of take note because, you know, we've been a part of the board on the church in Clearwater, and, and the Pastor Anthony Ballestero, he said, you know, I, I run into Hulk Hogan frequently in Clearwater. Not because he goes to the wrestling matches, but that's where Hulk Hogan lives. And he said, you know, he's, he's quite a gentleman, really. You know, when you get them outside of the, I haven't come to elevate anybody today, but it was Hulk Hogan that wrote this and it got my attention. So from the great, <clears throat> we'll say it like that, from the great theologian Hulk Hogan, he wrote this a little while back. He said, it's profound. He said, in three short months, just like he did with the plagues of Egypt, God has taken away everything that we worship. God said, you want to worship athletes? I'll shut down the stadiums. You want to worship musicians? I'll shut down civic centers. You want to worship actors? I'll shut down theater. You want to worship money? I'll shut down the economy. I'll collapse the stock market. You don't want to go to church and worship me? I'll make it so right now you, don't, you can't go to church. And if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, that's still Hulk Hogan. He said, maybe we don't need a vaccine. Maybe we need to take this time of isolation from the distractions of the world and have a personal revival where we focus on the only thing in the world that really matters, Jesus. So it is interesting to me that all of the earthly idols, and yes, I called them idols, and thrones and kingdoms of pop culture have been deposed. Maybe temporarily, maybe just for a season, but they have been. In sports, the Tokyo Summer Olympics canceled, Boston, Mar Boston Marathon canceled, NHL, CFL, NFL, MLB, NA NBA, and NHL canceled. For those of us that don't know much about sports that's basketball football soccer hockey canceled entertainment broadway canceled film festivals canceled music award shows canceled the tony awards canceled kentucky derby canceled bon jovi canceled taylor swift canceled burning man canceled Burning Man is the closest thing to Nebuchadnezzar erecting an idol in the desert 
that I've ever seen. It was this odd picture. It was like, like, I, like one of the, I just said, major events that have been canceled. Google. Burning Man is this huge man that they build and burn in the middle of the desert. I didn't go any further than that. I, all of our world's idols have been silenced. If you've ever seen some of these festivals, they're places of worship for sure. And the idols of our life have been silenced for a season. And I can't help but wonder if it's because God wants to take his throne. Habakkuk said it, woe unto him that saith to the wood, awake and to the dumb stone arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver. And, but he said this, there is no breath in it. There's no breath in it. It's just veneer over a substance. But that's not where Habakkuk saw it. In verse 20, he said, but the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. And, and, and so I'm, I'm not going to go back through and read the whole list of everything that's been canceled, but all those things that have been canceled, 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 canceled. Guess what? The kingdom, not canceled. The kingdom, not canceled. God, still in control. There isn't anybody... Uh, don't mistake, get ready. God's preparing. He's doing something in us because someone else would say, well, church has been canceled. Church has not been canceled. Church has been relocated. Church has been repositioned. Church has been revived. Church has been put in position. Church has been prepared. Church has been, come on, to the hungry man, a bitter thing is sweet. You miss a little bit of this for long enough and you're about ready to do whatever you gotta do to get back in the house of God. What are we getting ready to say? The king is coming. Get the throne prepared. Just let me close. And in the seventh year, Jehoiada, that priest, strengthened himself and he took captains of the hundreds and he went about in Judah and he gathered the Levites out of the cities of Judah. Everybody was saying, oh, yeah, the kingdom's in disarray. The kingdom's in the control of this evil woman. The kingdom's messed up. The kingdom's out of control. And, and he, just, he just silently, he begins to gather the captains of the hundreds and he sends out the captains of the hundreds and they bring the Levites in from all the cities. What, what's Jehoiada doing? He's saying, oh, the kingdom's not in disarray. We're just preparing for the greatest revival we've seen in our lifetime. And he just begins to bring the priesthood in and he begins to give them instruction. He tells them what they've got to do and how they go about doing it. And, and this is how we're going to prepare because, because I want to tell you something. The king is coming. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel anointing on the top of my head. It's just beginning to flow down. I, I want someone to know right now that the king is coming. The kingdom's in good hands. The king is in control today. And he prepared all the people. And then he got them all ready and he stood them up. The Bible says from the left all the way to the right, he prepared the priest. And he said, now who's, this is who you can let in. And this is who can't come in. And, and he reveals to them, he shows them the priest, the, the prince that's been in waiting. From the right side of the temple, what a sight it must have been. Every man had his weapon in his hand. They had the, the, the shields of David that had been kept in security in the, in the temple. And, and they had that all prepared and out in array. And, and this mighty spectacle, this army, not obedient to the queen that was in control, but prepared for the king that was about to come. And the Bible says that they brought out the king's son and they put him put upon him the crown and they gave him the testimony and they made him king and Jehoiada and his sons anointed him and God and, and said God save the king I wish someone would realize God is still in control the king is coming the king's ready but we've got to be ready to put him on the throne of our lives today you can stand together with me 2 Chronicles chapter 23, verse 12. Now when Athiah heard the noise of the people running and praising the king. Can you imagine? Here's her kingdom and all of a sudden everybody is given obeisance to, to this other one. So she comes running. 
Literally, that's what the Bible says. She heard the noise of the people running and praising the king. So she came to the people into the house of the Lord. And she looked and behold, the king, whoo, the king stood at his pillar at the entering in and the princes and the trumpets by the king and all the people of the land rejoiced. I, I wish someone would just begin to drown out the sound system for a moment. All the people of the land rejoiced and sounded with trumpets. Also, the singers with instruments of music and such as taught to sing praises come on they just began to have have this celebration and this rejoicing this this declaration ah the king is here she's about ready to get deposed she's about ready to be defeated that earthly system that has set itself up against the purpose of the kingdom of god is coming down they began to sing they began to celebrate. They began to rejoice. The music was going. The cymbals were clanging. The drums were beating. Come on. The, the harps were harping. And Jehoiada the priest, he said, he brought out the captains of the hundreds that were set over the host. And he said unto them, have her forth out of the ranges and whoso followeth her, let him be slain with the sword. For the priest said, slay her not in the house of the Lord. So they laid hands on her. And when she was coming to the entering of the horse gate by the king's house, they slew her there. God's about ready to tear down the kingdom of the world. So the proper kingdom, the right kingdom, the right king can take the throne today. I want to be part of that kingdom this morning hmm. final verse lift up your heads O ye gates and be lift up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in my question this morning is What's worked its way into your life? What's wormed its way into your heart? What's warred its way onto the throne of your life today that needs to get deposed? What, what's in your life that you got to remove? What, what's kind of set itself up and it's made this declaration of control? It's made this declaration of authority? It's made this declaration like you can, you won't, you shouldn't, you, you never will? What kind of declaration has the devil, the liar, been making in your life that you need to kind of say, I'm just going to pull you off the throne? for a minute because the king is coming into my heart the king is coming into my life today it's time for the king to come lift up your heads oh ye gates and be lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in he's prepared he's ready he's he's wanting get ready who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle Lift up your, up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory today. Can you just make that your prayer, God? Take your place in my life right now. God, take your place in my heart right now. Oh, saying of God, I know we've been serving the Lord. I know that God is in our life, but would someone just kind of make a declaration for a moment? The King is coming into my heart. The King is coming into my life. I'm going to be part of that kingdom. Come on, I'm going to be part of that kingdom in my home. I'm going to be part of that kingdom on my job. I'm going to be part of that kingdom. Come on, in, in my community, I, I'm going to be part of that kingdom today. Father, I, I give you great praise. I give you honor and I give you glory. God, I thank you for your word and the challenge that comes. And God, that anointing that we're feeling in this room right now, I'm asking that you would destroy every yoke of bondage. I pray that every lie of the enemy would be silenced and your word would take precedence right now. God, we are declaring you as King of kings and Lord of lords. Be the king of our heart today, God. Be the king of our life. Be the king of our family. God, be the king of this church today. God, be the king of what happening, happens this afternoon. Be, be the king of what's going to happen in our parking lot tonight. God, be the king. Take control. We yield it to you. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done today. We ask it in your powerful and in your precious name. In Jesus' name. They can go ahead and pull the webcast down, but why don't we just sing this so song together? 